Hello everyone, so in the last two videos I talked about how to edit some photos inside of Lightroom and a completely free app called Polar Photo Editor. These were a little bit more complex for edits, but today we're going to be using a third photo editor. Again, it's going to be a completely free one called Snapseed. So let's get started right away by rolling the intro. For those of you new to this channel, I'm like Ben Mahalford, a young photographer and filmmaker on a journey to become better at this art. I know that Snapseed is a very popular choice uh, for some of my subscribers and a lot of people use it because it's completely free and made by Google so you can trust them. Uh, I really like it, it's really great for all kinds of more basic edits. It has some limitations for a little bit more advanced stuff. So we're gonna see all of this inside of this photo editing video. But before we do that, I wanna remind you that if you can share this video, if you're enjoying it, it really does help the channel. So let's get started by going inside of Snapseed. So here we're gonna first open our photo. So we're gonna come here and we're gonna select this photo. This is a raw image that I took using my Sony a7 IV. So it's a pretty high res image. And uh, the reason I'm not using a picture for my Google Pixel 6 Pro is actually simply that I didn't take any raw that night. So I wouldn't be able to edit as much. And that's why I'm using a raw from my mirrorless camera. So if you come inside right here, we're gonna look at the image right here. And you see it's not very pleasing. The colors are not that great. Uh, so we definitely have some work to do with this image. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna start with the exposure. So what is really nice with Snapseed is how quickly you can play with things. So we're gonna bring up the exposure a little bit. So we wanna have a little bit more detail inside of this city right here. So we're just gonna bring it up like this. We're gonna go into highlights. We're gonna bring down the highlights quite a lot. We're gonna go inside of the shadows, bring up the shadows. So here what I'm doing is just creating some more dynamic range inside of the image uh, because we're gonna add some contrast afterward with another technique. Uh, if you watch my previous videos, you probably have an idea of what we're gonna be doing. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna add a little bit of contrast here, but not too much. Then we're gonna go inside of structure, add a little bit of more, more structure. Then go in saturation. I don't wanna to play too much with saturations. So we're just gonna put a little bit of saturation right here. Go and color temperature. Um, we might want to keep this around maybe colder. So maybe something around here. I do like that having a little bit more warmer colors to have more color inside of the lights right here. And finally the tint, I'm going to go a little bit more on the red side. So a little bit more like this. So now we have our base edit. It doesn't look great, but that's totally fine for now. The next thing I'm going to do is actually something very important. So we're just going to come inside of here, make sure that the rotate is good. So the auto settings seem to have worked pretty well. Then we're gonna go in tools again. We're gonna go inside of crop. We're gonna make sure that we have the original setting selected right here. And we're simply gonna crop to make sure that the tower is perfectly centered inside of the image here. Also always be careful on the sides right here. So we see that we're cutting right on the side here of the building. So in this case, I'm gonna crop in a little bit more so that doesn't happen because that's a little bit annoying for your eye when you're cutting something like that. So now we can enter and I think this crop is looking pretty good. So now the next thing we're gonna do is go inside of the tools right here, go in and have a bit more advanced tool right here, which is the uh, tones uh, curve right here. So first of all, we're gonna have our uh, luminance curve right here. So we're gonna simply come here. We're gonna bring up the shadow. So this is gonna bring up the shadows and make them look a little bit more faded. And we're also gonna bring down a little bit the highlights. And then we're gonna create what we call a S curve inside of this. So this is how we're bringing back some contrast inside the image. We're gonna see right away, we're bringing back a lot of contrast. So I might've done it a little bit too much. Be very careful with this tool. You can actually really easily uh, go overboard with it and make the image look even worse. So be careful when using it. So I do think something, maybe I wanna bring the shadows up a little bit more. I think something like that looks pretty good. Then we're gonna go in the other curves we have right here. So we have red. So here we're simply gonna create a curve that's round a little bit like this. So this is gonna bring the black values of the red uh, channels inside of our image up. So they're not gonna make them as dark. So same thing we're gonna do here with green. So here what is very cool with uh, Snapseed is actually you can see your other curves underneath. So we're just gonna try and make sure that the red, uh, green and blue actually look pretty similar. So we want something that's looking almost the same uh, because if you make them too different, you're really gonna affect the look of the image. That might be what we want, but in this case, we don't wanna play too much with it. I actually might play just a little bit with my blue right here to get something slightly different inside of our highlights and our shadows. So I'm just gonna play maybe something a little bit like this. So again, a little bit of a S curve inside of our blues and this is going to allow to get a little bit more of the red and uh, green inside of 
our highlights and less inside of our shadows. So wait a second. So I think something like that is looking pretty good. So now if we come here, we already, if we look at our, our before, so before and after, we already have something that's looking much better in my opinion. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is actually go inside of here and find our selective tool right here. So we're gonna go on side of selective and this is a tool I really like inside of Snapseed. So we can simply click on a part of the image you wanna edit and then you can play with the brightness. So for example, here we can bring the brightness, then we can go on the saturation, maybe bring up the saturation of the sky also. Yes, I definitely wanna have a sky that's more blue and we can even play with a structure that's not very important, uh, but you get the idea right here. Then we can go back here and go inside of the white balance option here. I do wanna tweak it a little bit because I think the look right here isn't looking too good. So I might wanna bring down the temperature. Actually, I might bring up the temperature a little bit, then go in tint and bring it even more on the pink side. So something like this I think is looking pretty good. Now if we go inside of our edit options right here, we're actually going to go inside of here and select our vintage look right here. So I do think when you have a city, applying a vintage look can make it look much better. So we're just going to go through the options here and try and find something uh, that we like. I think I like something around, I think this one or seven here. I think seven here, I like it quite a lot. Uh, we can play here with different settings so we can make it brighter or darker. Uh, we can change the saturation, so if we want it more or less saturation, the style strength, so we can make it stronger or less. I might go a little bit stronger, more something like that. And then we can decide if we want to have a lot of vignette or not too as much vignette. So I think something like that is looking pretty good. So next thing we're gonna do is just go back inside of our raw edit options. And like I said in my other videos, you must sometimes go back and re-edit some things afterwards. That's totally normal. So actually we're just gonna come back here and I think the contrast was a little bit too much. So we're just gonna bring down the contrast. We're also gonna bring down the exposure a little bit and see how this looks. And look at this. So this is what we had before. So if we long press, this is what we had before and after before and after. It's not a big edit, but I think it does a big difference. One thing personally I would really like to do inside of this image is make the blues inside of the image more on the teal side because there's teal and orange inside of this image. So more of the lights of the city are more on the yellow orange side. And if you want to have a good look, you want to have something that's opposite on the color wheel. So you want to have something more on the teal side. And one thing that's missing inside of Snapseed, at least uh, what I know of it is some tools like HSL tools to be able to edit every single color individually. So be able to make our blues more teal. Uh, so that's one of the limitations inside of Snapseed. And that's why oh, I don't use it as much as the other photo editing apps. If you want something a little bit more complete, but don't want to pay anything, I highly suggest you go check out the Polar Photo Editing app. I have a comparison between that and Lightroom and Snapseed. So definitely go check out that video. Uh, but yes, overall, I still think that Snapseed is a very good photo editor. So now the only last step that is you have to do is go inside of export right here and then you can click on save to save your export and you're done with this photo edit. I think this wraps up my little series on photo editing from the pictures I took at Cary Park. Again, go check out my social media networks and be posting more pictures and edits on there. But if there's another picture you want me to be editing or another photo app you want me to show uh, how to use, definitely let me know down in the comments below. I also would really appreciate if you could share this video with somebody else or matter photo editing videos with other people because it really helps the YouTube algorithm when you're sharing the videos with other people. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting the like button below and definitely subscribe for more content on photography and filmmaking. See you in the next one.